I don't. I don't. Uh, I don't usually. Relationship. It may seem harsh for you to hear him say in a, an agrarian illustration, hey, if you keep looking back, you're not fit for the kingdom, but I think you'd say you're not fit for marriage. Wouldn't you say this? If you're constantly going to be talking about your former love, that's not going to work. You know, the Bible's very clear. You've been betrothed to Christ. Your attention ought to be there. And the practical ways we do this, when we start thinking about what it was like or what it would be like if I were still calling the shots and I weren't under the authority of Christ. Don't ever find yourself thinking that way. And whenever that comes up, remember your thoughts are as bad as your words because Christ reads your thoughts. You get that and shoo that right out of your mind. Yeah, you're a child of Christ. You are a follower of the King. You're in this thing to the end. No longing to live the life that your neighbor lives, that you think is so much better. One passage on this, would you look at this with me? Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11. Verse 13 through 16. To jump in here to this divine commentary on the patriarchs' lives, who you might remember, starting with Abraham, was called out of the southern Mesopotamian area, something called Ur of the Chaldeans, to go up the Crescent Valley there and go over into what is later described in the Bible as Canaan. And he was promised he would have this great family and he would have this big nation come from his, his family, and then they would occupy this land. So God promised him all of this, and then he never got any of it, except a few little parcels to bury his loved ones. You remember that? Verse 13, Hebrews 11. These, look back up, Sarah, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, these patriarchs, they all died in faith, not having received the things promised. Now, the things promised was this land they were going to have. All these descendants, more than the sand on the sea or the stars in the sky. But having seen them and greeted them from afar. See, that's what this chapter is all about, by faith. You know, one day it's going to happen. One day it'll be there. And having acknowledged that they were, now here's the present tense for their lives, when they lived on this planet, they were strangers and exiles on earth. I guess the promise is going to motivate us to change our life now. We'll leave our old comfortable home in the southern Mesopotamia region where we were living, and we're going to go, and we're going to live in tents, and we're going to go from place to place, and we're going to be exiles and strangers, but that's okay. Christ has called us to a future, and we haven't even realized it here after decades and decades and decades of life, but we're going to trust one day it's coming. Verse 14, for people who speak thus, I love that phrase, because that includes us, I hope, I hope that includes you, people who